Uh, the first one I have is um, guardianship of Angel Fisher. Um, just so the court knows, I have tried contacting my client. I have not been able to get a hold of her. She hasn't contacted me at this point. I can sit through the hearing today, um, but I have nothing to add until she gets a hold of me um, or I'm able to, to finally reach her. And Your Honor, I've um, given her phone calls, text messages um, with Ms. Winkles, contact information as well um, since the hearing last week, and I get no response. You got no response? I also... I also Facebooked her and text messaged, I'm dancing, Facebook and text messaged to her and gave her um, Aaron's phone number and I haven't heard from her either. Same. Since the last meeting. I assume there's not a petition filed for the third party at this point that we've been uh, discussing. No, that's correct, Your Honor. There's nothing new filed. And she's not living with you, Ms. Kulawine. She comes and goes. So she was here last weekend, but then she walked out uh, 6 a.m. Monday morning. Um, I'm not sure. I think she went to her boyfriend's house, but she hasn't contacted me since then. So I'm not exactly sure where she's at. Okay. I just wanted to say that I've also contact or messaged her and sent her all the information and she hasn't contacted me. We've extended the emergency. It looks like those letters um, expired on the 14th of April. That's correct. Uh, so right now there's no guardianship order in effect. Um, and have you filed for a full guardianship? Yes, we have. We thought we were going to be doing that in February, and then a whole bunch of different things happened at that point. So we filed for the full guardianship. Um, we thought that the hearing was going to be in February when we did um, her brother Lyric's full guardianship paperwork. But that hearing has not occurred yet? No, it has not, Your Honor. All right. I still... Um... I want to give Ms. Winkles um, a little bit more time to contact uh, Ms. Fisher. And um, next week, we don't have this hearing because of what we call judicial conference to May 3rd, um, May 2nd. And that works for me, Your Honor. Okay. That works for me as well. So... All right, let's be here on May 2nd. Um, I might try contacting okay. her at school, Your Honor, and we might, I'll, I'll just go that route. If, if She's currently not in school. We set her up with the GED program, but the last time I heard from Helen from there, she has not been participating in that. Okay. I'll keep trying, Your Honor. All right, keep trying. If you can't uh, contact her by then, I guess... I would entertain a motion if you wanted to bring it to a draw. And um, we'll have to probably decide what we're going to do with the full guardianship at that point. Uh, and particularly if nobody else has yes, filed sure, one's ready for guardianship, well. then I think we, we probably need to go. Uh, this is a motion to compel interrogatories. That's yeah. right, Your Honor. And yeah. we've go ahead. We've received no response at all. We, we submitted them when he still had counsel. We've sent out a notice of 20, uh, CR26I. Um, he never responded. We've sent him emails. And in fact, I also emailed him my proposed orders. Um, yesterday, we've sent it by mail, um, received nothing. I just asked that you enter my order, which gives him an additional two weeks and um, a $500 um, judgment. I will send that to his house. Again, I'll email him and maybe that might force him to, to give us that discovery. Is um, anybody else here on the case of guardianship of Robert Wynn? All right, based on that, I will uh, enter your order. Did you submit an order to the court? Oh. I, I did, Your Honor. You should have it. I do have it. Your Honor, oh, this is Megan Gilmore. Hi, Ms. Gilmore. Hi, if, I'm, in, I'm in subsequently in Judge Evans' docket. I was hoping that we could just quickly address 
the um, Aldridge matter? And we have a number of things on Aldridge to address, but I think what you're interested in is me signing the order relating to Maverick Aldridge, right? Yes, Your Honor. And I, I did a, um, I did set this on for my calendar for presentation, but it does look like the court did enter the order dismissing. And I think that the clerk's office has um, subsequently um, removed me from that case. So I think that we're okay on the guardianship matter. I was just asking the court to enter the um, parenting plan order. And I have an order on hearing of March 28, 2023. Yes, and the only thing that changes the, from the bench order to that order is it just memorializes that my client is the interim primary parent. And we also discuss suspending child support given the fact that he's primary parent. So that just includes those two, two issues. All right, um, anyone else want to be heard on the issue of Maverick Aldrich? Not Serenity right now, but Maverick Aldrich. We'll get back to the matter of Serenity Aldrich in just a moment. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. And uh, Ms. Farr is here also. Okay. Uh, we're on for review. So um, I guess the question is where we're at in this case. Uh, at the last hearing, um, Mr. South uh, withdrew or indicated he would need to, to withdraw from representing Lacey, the mother. I represent the father, um, Vance uh, Baldwin Jr. Um, and so um, I probably, an attorney hasn't been appointed for Lacey, and I'm, I'm looking to see if she's here, and I don't see her, so... Uh, and I haven't had an opportunity to talk with uh, with my client. I, I got a phone number in uh, Castle Rock that I think, at least when I call it, it, it says, you know, the message is this is Vance Baldwin. So I think it's the correct number. But um, I tried to contact him. Actually, I hadn't had a chance until this morning and left a message. So I haven't had an opportunity to talk with my client. Has a full guardianship petition been entered at, or filed at this point? So I'm revising it right now because I need to add a residential schedule um, to it for visitation. I spoke with Lacey uh, last week and um, we, we talked about a lot, you know, what needed to be done for her, her getting back on her feet and how everything's going and um, in the guardianship paperwork it gives an option for the residential schedule and you know all that stuff and so I wanted to go through and revise it and um, Jackson had indicated to her that he wanted to stay here and she agreed so I have to add that consent form in there as well and so there's just a couple things that I have to add to it okay the emergency minor guardianship, I have it expiring on April 20th. And Jackson still hasn't been appointed a lawyer um, as well. I was going to address that. And um, my thought on looking at that is I think I'd like to appoint Sherry Farr as what's called a guardian ad litem mm -hmm. um, and then her um, position would be to inform the court what's in the best interest of Jackson and um, Josie yeah and Josie um, I I think that makes more sense at this point okay. that so that that protects Jackson also protects Josie and and uh, Ms. Farr has already been involved in this case. So I think that makes sense. But that still leaves us um, with needing an attorney for Ms. Wilson. Um, I'm gonna make a note, I'm gonna check with, uh, I won't say his name here, uh, but I'll, I'll check with an attorney that we've used in the past. Okay, okay. the guardian ad litem roughly the same as an attorney as far as the kids go. I just want to make sure that they're being represented appropriately. Uh, Ms. Farr's um, role will be to advise the court what's in the best interest of the child. 
And um, that is very similar to what an attorney would do um, to uh, assist with this. Okay. Okay. And um, the consent paperwork, does she need to sign that before I submit it or does she submit it once, like does she come and sign it after I submit the guardianship paperwork to the court? Do you know? I would probably suggest um, filing it right afterward because when you file the guardianship paperwork, you'll get a case number mm -hmm. and um, then you'll need to put that on the consent. So it gets routed to the, the right file. Okay. Okay. Ms. Farr, uh, any comment at this point? No, Your Honor. I understand what's going on. We'll, I'll get the uh, GAO order from you and then we'll move forward. Okay. Um, uh, anybody else want to be heard on this case? Uh, are you extending then the emergency guardianship order? I think I've already done it 60 days, but here's what I'm thinking. I can extend the emergency minor guardianship order until the hearing of the full guardianship. Okay. Uh, there, there's a box to do that. So I will do that in this case. Are we setting a deadline for filing the, the main guardianship case? Well, certainly by the next hearing, Ms. Farr, uh, I know you've been involved in this case already. Um, how long would it take to do a guardian ad litem report? Um, so I, I'm going to say at least an, another month. Okay. And if Ms. Bodine just gets the petition filed, then there's no problem, you know, with the extension. All those other documents can come afterwards. Okay. Well, let's go to the end of May. Um, I I will do that extension. Um, and we'll go to May 30. We'll um, hopefully have a guardian ad litem report and um, be able to address how we go forward with the full petition at that point. Okay. Anybody else? Sounds okay. good. Tyler Weaver. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor, Sherry Farr. Okay. Ginger wrap. So the information I've got is that there's not yet service on the mother or the father. Uh, last time we were here, I suggested a motion to serve by mail, um, but that had not been filed yet. That and has changed, Your Honor. They have both been served that I filed yesterday. Oh, you, you filed it yesterday. Okay. For both mother and father. Our, uh, is Kendra Rapp here? Oh, there's Kendra Rapp, good. And Brian Weaver? Okay. Um, since they've just been served, it seems to me maybe what we need to do is put this over uh, two weeks so that um, either of them can respond. And, um, I looked at this yesterday and the uh, Prusa service just showed up uh, today, I see. So I'll extend the immediate emergency minor guardianship to uh, May 9th. That means um, all of the authority that you have right now, Ms. Woodruff, remains. Okay. And I'm gonna let somebody in here. Um, and then on the 9th, uh, hopefully um, we can hear from Ms. Rapp and also the father, if he can be with us, um, about their position regarding this guardianship. Okay. Your Honor, is there anything I need to do or am I, are we just waiting until the 9th for parents to be able to respond to their, what they've been served or? In this case, that's what we're doing, um, but have you filed and do you intend to file for a full guardianship, meaning a permanent guardianship? I, from my understanding, I thought that had been filed. Okay. All right, I, I think uh, you're right. It was uh, filed on March 8th. So, okay, 
we'll address um, both of those. If there's opposition uh, to the guardianship, then um, we'll talk about how that uh, gets heard and who hears it. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Um, morning, so we'll be back Amanda here. Amanda Holder and I represent Mr. DePriest in this matter. Okay. And Ms. Day is here. I had a note to review this um, regarding visitation issues um, and we may need more time to um, review the CV report. Uh, let me go to Ms. Day and, and ask about the timing on that. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I do expect to have the uh, court visitor report done around the first or the second in time for the hearing um, set for May 9th for that to be reviewed. So I am in that process. Um, I will let the court know that I've not heard from Mother. She's not responded. I've not had any contact with her. Um, and it sounds like from what little bit I have um, been able to accomplish, she's not having a lot of contact in her visitation. So um, I think we're kind of in a in an interesting place, but hopefully um, as we move forward, that will more information will be brought to light. Okay. Ms. Holder, uh, any any response? Uh, no, Your Honor. I think that would be appropriate to wait for a more full review. Okay. We would ask at this time that emergency custody, or sorry, um, the emergency guardianship still be extended. I do have a note to do that. So um, I'll extend the emergency minor guardianship order until May 9th. So uh, that means, uh, Mr. DePriest, you will continue to have all the authority uh, that you have now um, um, as a guardian, okay? Okay. All right, let's wait till May 9th and we'll uh, review uh, Ms. Day's report and we'll get back at that point. I had a note that Ms. Um, Howard wanted an attorney. Um, is Okay, um, I think she had asked for that earlier. Um, I was gonna appoint Kurt Anagnostu as her attorney. So I will take care of that appointment. Uh, and uh, there's been a report issued by Ms. Farr. Have the individuals involved in that case, have you had a chance to review that? Yes, I have. Yes. Well, Okay, so it looks like I have both Aldrich's here. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Scott Aldrich and Jessica Aldrich. Yes. And um, okay, why don't I hear uh, briefly from Your Honor? I don't see Lillian's here too. I don't see Tracy or Brian. I don't see them either. It's almost eleven, so um, I think we need to continue to go forward. Yeah, they were well aware of the hearing. We just talked about it on the weekend. Okay. Have they seen your report? I seen I, it. I sent it to everybody last night, which I know was late, but I'm assuming that they would have received it. They were waiting for it. Okay. Ms. Farr, why don't you briefly summarize uh, your conclusions? So first I'll apologize for having the report delivered so late, but um, a lot had happened in a short period of time, and I did the best I could to get a, a thorough report in so that Your Honor had a fuller picture. Um, to summarize, though, so Brian and Tracy filed the initial petition, um, and they have had a temporary um, emergency guardianship of serenity um, since the end of February, so almost, so about six weeks now. And Scott and Jessica filed their petition recently, and they have served everybody that should be served. Brian and Tracy have not served uh, anyone. And I did have a question about the service that apparently the clerk's office uh, prepared a proof of service that I, I'm not sure was a, the proper thing to do. So um, 
service has not been effectuated in Brian and Tracy's case. Service okay. has been effectuated in Scott and Jessica's case. And both parents have signed the consent to the full guardianship in Scott and Jessica's case. My understanding of the statute is that if the parents have consented and there is no detriment to the child, then the petition must be granted. Um, I have viewed both homes um, and I'm gonna speak to Scott and Jessica's home because I think that that's the, the direction that the statute guides us to. And that is that it's an appropriate place for the child to live in right now. Um, mother is going to enter into some treatment um, um, to get some help to improve her situation and be able to come back and request modification and uh, get custody of serenity back once she's on her feet and able to provide. Father is incarcerated. Um, he is not able to um, provide for serenity at this time. Um, Scott and Jessica have been the steady uh, people in Serenity's life besides mother. And um, the petition that was filed by Brian and Tracy, I think was partly filed in bad faith and partly filed of their lack of understanding of the situation and what was being told to them by CPS um, and lack of understanding of court proceedings. Uh, being pro se people. So they may have perceived certain actions taking place that really didn't, such as they thought that serenity was being placed with them, which was not true. They were tasked with supervising Lillian, not uh, serenity was never, or serenity was never placed with her, with them. So um, I know that this is about serenity, but I just want to say also that had there been a better understanding of the situation, um, I, be I believe there would be a different outcome for Maverick right now as well. And so that is unfortunate. But going forward with the serenity, I believe that um, with the proper paperwork that's been filed, the parents' consents, everybody having been served, that it is appropriate to appoint Scott and Jessica as the full guardian for serenity. Just a moment here. Based on the procedural information, if you need me to go into more detail about specifics of um, living situations and instances that have happened, I can, but I believe just on the procedural information that we have that that's enough to a point. Tracy Hedrick is um, trying to call in. So I'm gonna take a couple moments to see if we can get connected. I do have a quick question though. Uh, sure, go ahead. When would this be like taking place if it was to be transferred into Scott and Jessica? When would it take place? It might take place today. Okay, thank you so much. Tracy Hedrick, can you hear us? I'm here. Okay, good. Have you seen the guardian ad litem report or the court visitor report? Um, yes, and your honor, we would like to ask for a continuance at this time as this case has taken a different direction after two months and we were not informed until late Friday the 14th and we have retained legal counsel and would like to ask if we could have time to meet with our counsel as we feel that Ms. Carr's report is very one-sided and a lot of the facts are incorrect. And even though we have told her some of those facts are incorrect, she never put our voice in this report. So You're aware like that both parents have consented to the Aldrich's uh, as being guardian? Um, that we know of, yes. We haven't seen Miles, as though Miles has told us a different story. So we're not for sure. Has Miles filed a written consent? Or have you seen one? Ms. Uh, Farr is indicating, yes, he has. 
It was filed yesterday and I confirmed it with him. Uh, I had a phone call while he was in the jail. Okay. But yes, there's a, a lot of um, facts in this case that what led up to this point that are not correct. Okay. And well, we have, um, in my meeting with Ms. Barr, I explained this to her, but she never put that in her report, so. Ms. Hedrick, let me uh, read to you the statute, and this um, relates to the full guardianship that was, uh, or full guardianship petition that was filed by the Aldrichs. So um, this is at RCW 11-130-185. says a person becomes a guardian for a minor only on appointment by the court. And then number two, the court may appoint a guardian for a minor who does not have a guardian if the court finds the appointment is in the minor's best interest and and then there's three options the first one is each parent of the minor after being fully informed of the nature and consequences of the guardianship consents and um what we have here is this case is squarely within the statute that says uh, the court um, should appoint a guardian uh, if both parents consent and uh, based on the petitions, and that's both in your case and the Aldrich's case, I would find that, um, that the appointment of the guardian is in the minor's best interest. But as to who I appoint, once the parents have signed a consent, then I have little of any um, latitude to appoint anyone else other than who they consent to. So I don't know that a continuance is really going to um, have the ability to challenge that particular fact. Um, any any response, uh, Ms. Hendrick? Um, well, just as I said, is that um, this case was on a complete different direction, and Lily has been making promises and miles to us. That, so we're very confused. We did not get legal counsel because we did not know it was going to turn like this this late in the game because no one else has ever said they want a guardianship. And Lily and Miles have all their stuff at our house. They So this is all very abrupt to us and we don't understand why the change and what's going on. And so at this point we felt we needed counsel because this is all very new to us. Because okay. we were on the understanding it was going differently with Lillian and Miles. Yeah, Miles isn't even on the birth certificate. We don't even know if Miles Radcliffe is actually the parent. And that's out of Miles' mouth. <laughs> All right, here's um, what I'm going to do um, based on the consents that have been filed and uh, the language of RCW 11-130-185. Um, I'm going to appoint um, Scott Aldrich and Jessica Aldrich, the full guardians for... Um, Serenity Aldridge. The okay, but there's been CPS case in Washington still, and they live in Oregon. He's already appointed it. There was a recommendation of appointing, I think Sylvia Aldridge was it, as a um, um, local. Um, I believe I had the note down. Yes, Your Honor, she was also a co-petitioner, but I think she's better served as the resident agent. Right, so she'll be the resident agent. The immediate minor guardianship that I had granted in favor of um, Tracy Hedrick and Brian Fletcher expires today, and I'm not going to extend that. Uh, that means Serenity will need to go into the Fletcher's care um, by the end of today or early tomorrow. 
Your, your you Honor, that would be the Aldrich's. Aldrich's. Yeah. Aldrich's care. Um, if you still want to meet with counsel, uh, Ms. Hedrick and Mr. Fletcher, um, within 10 days, you could bring a motion to reconsider that decision. And if um, you explain to counsel that these consents have been filed, and if they think there's a way around that, um, I'm happy to have you file a motion to reconsider this decision. All right, thank you. Um, but for right now, um, the Aldrichs are going to be the um, guardians of serenity going forward. Do we have an order on that? There wasn't an order submitted, Your Honor, but I'm happy to help um, the Aldridges get one to you by email in within the next couple hours. I just have a emergency. Are you okay. uh, I'm no looking count. for a full. So. And Ms. Farr is acting as their legal counsel. She's not. She's acting in on behalf of the child and advising the court what is in the best interest of the child. Well, factual I understand things. you may disagree with her, and that happens, but uh, she is not advocating for the Aldrich's. Um, she advises the court what she believes is in the best interest of the child. All right, that's all right. Look at how good they did with Lily. She's out there running around. We're going to go back into the mouth. All right, uh, if you can work with them on that order and get it to me, then I'll sign it. I'll get it emailed over to you. And Your Honor, can we put a timeline for the exchange of the child to occur today? Yeah, let's do that. Um, the child should be transferred, let's say, by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. And to whom? Will to that be them the the just picking her up? or To whom, Your Honor? If you want a specific person, the child is transferred to Jessica Aldrich. Okay. At 5 Perfect. Thank you. Where at? Um, can you do it at, well, Ms. Aldrich, where would you like the transfer to take place? Um, it doesn't matter to me. I'm in town. Whether you do so the high school. That's perfect. What was that? We can do it here at the high school. Okay, let's transfer um, at the high school. Is that Kelso High School? Kelso High School at Gaither Pool. Okay, so uh, at the front of uh, Kelso High School by five o'clock tomorrow. And Your Honor, will the order address visitation with either parent? We can discuss that now. Um, do you have a recommendation, Ms. Farr? Um, I believe that both parents' visitation should be supervised. Is there a non-professional supervisor that could be involved, Ms. Aldrich? A non-professional? I don't believe so. She can be supervised um, at either my home or at Sylvia's home. Uh, Ms. Lillian Aldrich, do you want to weigh in on um, visitation with Serenity? I would just love to see my daughter. I haven't seen her since February 28th. Okay. Would you have any concern about seeing her at the Aldrich's house? Absolutely not. Absolutely like I, not. Like no concerns. No concern. Okay. I am going to uh, accept Ms. Farr's recommendation that it should be supervised. Um, let's um, start with a Saturday, like 10 to two, starting this Saturday. Okay. And um, I will put this back on the calendar in a month in order to discuss increasing the amount of visitation at that time. Okay. I want to make Thank sure. Thank you. And, uh, and father's uh, visits would be? I, it will have to probably be the same thing, although a different day. So he gets. He's uh, also incarcerated currently. <laughs> Your Honor, can I talk? 
Just a moment. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Regard, regarding the father's visits, I believe that somebody else would need to be there to supervise as well. He also won't even be really asking for any right now as he's going through, like he's in jail right now and he has no communication with any of us anyway. And if he's in jail, maybe we should address the father's visits um, a month from now when we come back. It's a good idea. So, so if we could put in the order then that the visits for now are just for Lillian, that would That'd be great. No, I think we need visitation on our end as well. At least be a consideration. Trinity has resided with us for two and a half months. She's very as the parent, I would really prefer that to not be happening. Yeah, we, you know, we got her off the bottle. We got her off the binky. She's potty trained. Nobody did anything for her before. She was potty trained before she went to you. All right, we're not going to have ready. this discussion. You would just like to be able to have visiting. She is attached to us, and we are very attached to her. I'm going to ask. We love her a lot. Ms. Hendrick and Mr. Fletcher, let's um, let's not talk right now. Okay, so I'm going to order the um, um, supervised visits at the Aldriches for Ms. Lillian Aldridge from 10 to 2 on Saturdays. I'd like that to be every Saturday if we can do that. And yes. let's come back on, I think it's May 30th. We'll uh, revisit the visitation and talk about the father's visitation. And your honor, am I staying on this case through those visits or are you- just I would like you to, could you do that? Uh, to yes. in? And then again, uh, Ms. Hedrick and Mr. Fletcher, you have um, 10 days from today to bring a motion to reconsider and so um, I invite you to do that if you'd like to do that. I would, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, I think that's it on this case. Thank you. So are they, is Brian and Tracy going to bring Serenity to me here at the high school? Yes. That's, that's what I'm expecting to happen. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's what you said. That's what we'll do, Your Honor. All right, thank you. You betcha. Thank All right, you. Uh, that's it on that case. That's the end of our docket. Um, Ms. Rapp, did you have something you would do, discuss? Yeah, I was just wanting to know how I go about um, seeking for um, a lawyer or whatever. Yeah, when an attorney appointed. Okay, what, what case? Uh, give me the child's Shayla, name. Shayla Weaver. No attorneys have been appointed in that case. So I'm going to appoint uh, Kurt Anagnostu to represent you. Kurt? Kurt, K-U-R-T. Yeah. 